Many scientists around the world nearly had a heart attack when they got news that Einstein might actually be wrong after all these years. Yes, you heard that right. In science, as in life, you frequently have to make mistakes before you find the solution. And even though Albert Einstein is undoubtedly one of the greatest geniuses of all time, he too made some enormous mistakes. So what has gone wrong with Albert Einstein's theories? Why are they just now coming into question? And how does this newest discovery challenge everything we thought we knew? Let's find out in this episode of Voyager. The strangeness of quantum physics is well known. Despite being the most powerful and accurate scientific theory ever created, it is a foundation that has given rise to countless mysteries, paradoxes and conundrums. According to quantum physics, things can happen without a reason. Things can exist in two locations at once. Watching the universe could permanently change it and systems made up of components spread out throughout the galaxy can behave as a single instantaneous entity. You would be excused if you assumed that quantum physics must be flawed given all these challenges to both common sense and classical physics. Certainly did Albert Einstein. If we want to comprehend where quantum theory is at the moment, the tale of his insight into its shortcomings is worth telling. With his explanation of the photoelectric effect, in which light particles can generate electric currents, Einstein really contributed to the development of quantum theory. Because of James Clerk Maxwell's contributions, Light was first only thought of as a wave phenomenon, but by the late 1920s, Einstein had grown frustrated with how the theory was being advanced by physicists like Werner Heisenberg and Niels Bohr. The new interpretation of quantum theory that surfaced in the 1920s did not satisfy Albert Einstein. Einstein expressed his doubt in a letter to German mathematician and physicist Max Born in December 1926. For the physicists of the period, Born's radical new approach to thinking about matter waves in quantum mechanics had become the de facto standard. Einstein wrote one of his most well-known and frequently quoted statements in his letter to Born. Let's look at the main idea Einstein wanted to get through in this letter. Quantum mechanics is very impressive, but an inner voice tells me that it is not yet the real thing. The theory says a lot but does not really bring us any closer to the secret of the old one. I, at any rate, am convinced that he does not play dice. Einstein expressed sentiments similar to this on many occasions throughout his life. In various ways, Einstein became fond of insisting that God does not play dice with the universe. What did Einstein mean by this exactly? Understanding how determinism functions in classical physics is essential to comprehend the substance of Einstein's criticism. In theory, all future occurrences can be calculated and predicted with absolute accuracy using the equations of classical physics. The equations of classical physics could be used to predict every future event if it were feasible to know the precise location and velocity of every atom and other particle in the universe, as well as if one had access to an indefinitely powerful computer. These equations might also be used backward to determine everything that has ever occurred. In actuality, the present tightly determines the future in classical physics. The cosmos moves in a convoluted yet totally predictable way, much like a large and complicated clock. This understanding of the cosmos was shared by Einstein. Chance and probability have no place in classical physics. Classical physics version of God doesn't roll dice. The picture painted by Born's understanding of quantum physics was different. Its cosmos differed from classical physics in that it was less predictable. An electron, or any other quantum item, in Born's interpretation of quantum mechanics, is stretched across the region of space bounded by the wave function. An electron's location is always measured as a point with no spatial dimension. An electron is present simultaneously in every area that its wave function covers before being detected though. It is actually present in several locations at once. In this view, electrons and other quantum particles live in all possible locations and carry out all possible actions at all possible times. In terms of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, this can also be explained. This rule states that a quantum object's velocity is less specified the more accurately defined its position is, and vice versa. Therefore, according to quantum mechanics, an object cannot be in just one place at just one speed. Think of an electron. The wave function that best describes it has two sharp peaks, 
which we shall refer to as positions A and B. Let's now assume that places A and B are equally and completely covered by the wave function's shape. In this scenario, there is a 50% chance that the electron will be located at position A and a 50% chance that it will be found at site B if an experiment is run to determine its location. This example may appear to be the same as flipping a coin, which has two equally likely outcomes. Such a comparison would, however, overlook a crucial aspect of probability's function in quantum mechanics. It is feasible to compare the electron stated previously to the flipping and covering of a coin. Either heads or tails may appear. The key distinction is that the coin is already set to either come up heads or come up tails when it is covered. We just aren't aware of it yet. In contrast, the electron in the experiment mentioned earlier is present in both sites A and B at the same time. This experiment demonstrates that there is a 50% probability that an electron would be found at place A and a 50% chance that it would be located at site B, even if we know all there is to know about the electron and the precise structure of its wave function. Therefore, the behavior of the cosmos is not deterministic. In contrast to the deterministic universe represented by classical physics, the quantum universe is essentially probabilistic. According to Einstein, the cosmos and its rules must be wholly predetermined. He believed that probability and chance had no place in the fundamentals of nature. This is the reason why Einstein rejected or disagreed with the quantum mechanical theory. The fact that Einstein was completely at ease with the roles that chance and probability play in physics must be noted, though. He had no problem with practical indeterminisms, such as that presented by the toss of a coin. He understood that it was impossible to foresee how the coin would land in real life. He also understood that the outcome of any given coin flip might be altered by even the smallest adjustments to the way the thumb struck the coin, microscopic changes to its shape, or subtle adjustments to the distribution of the air molecules in the immediate vicinity. The possibility of true indeterminism, which was deeply ingrained in the fundamental rules of physics, did trouble Einstein. Even an all-knowing creature would not be able to accurately forecast the result of any event due to this type of indeterminism. This sort of indeterminism appeared to be present in the new quantum mechanics theory. The universe, according to Einstein, is deterministic by nature, and determinism is woven into the very nature of things. This prevented him from joining the growing consensus that the universe is probabilistic. Einstein made multiple attempts to uncover problems with this quantum mechanics theory over the following few years. In 1935, Einstein co-authored a study with Boris Podolsky and Nathan Rosen that provided a thought experiment based on the framework of quantum mechanics to show why such hidden variables should exist. Prior to being measured, a particle in standard quantum theory is said to be in a superposition of states. This indicates that the particle's value for the desired characteristic is not yet known with certainty. The classic Schrodinger's cat paradox, in which a cat in a box is simultaneously both dead and alive until someone opens the box to have a look at it, is a result of superposition. The EPR team, also known as Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen, set out to investigate the effects of superposition and measurement. They used the following example to make their case. Take two quantum particles. Let them interact so that their attributes are connected. After that, put some distance between them. The initial linkage suggests that when a property of the first particle is measured, the matching state of the second particle is immediately fixed. Since there hasn't been any exchange of light, it follows that the second particle already possesses the characteristic that a measurement would have discovered. The characteristic of the second particle, which was determined by the measurement of a first particle far away, was considered an element of reality by EPR. They concluded that, despite all the mention of superpositions, measurements and collapsing wave functions in quantum physics, something was still lacking. While EPR believed they had made a convincing case against quantum weirdness, history provided a response that was even more bizarre. The EPR paradox ended up creating a brand new category of quantum weirdness rather than pointing out a flaw in quantum physics. The EPR conundrum was revisited by Irish physicist John Bell in 1964, and he came up with a wonderful set of relationships that would let experiments tell the difference between classical reality and quantum reality. This was the beginning of the next chapter. Although Bell's theorem was much more advanced than the experimental equipment available to him at the time, 
it was finally possible to directly test it by the early 1980s. Alain Aspect confirmed that widely separated quantum particles behaved in ways that defied the laws of conventional physics after allowing them to interact at first in a famous series of experiments. Quantum oddity had triumphed. Hidden variables in the local sense that would be consistent with special relativity are not possible. Alan Aspect, John F. Clauser and Anton Zeilinger received the Physics Nobel Prize in 2017 for their experimental work on Bell's theorem. These are researchers that disproved Einstein's theory of hidden variables, which was used to describe quantum physics that wasn't complete. Their discovery has had an impact on quantum cryptography and computation. Clauser, Aspect and Zeilinger's work is so groundbreaking and deserving of the greatest honor in physics because it conclusively disproves the existence of hidden variables. However, the reason why non-locality does not contravene relativity is unclear and has been the subject of intense discussion ever since. One hypothesis is that since entangled particles are still a member of the same system, their physical separation is irrelevant. Physics does not yet have a theory of everything, which is a comprehensive explanation for all observed particles and forces in the universe. Quantum mechanics discuss tiny, insignificant things, whereas Einstein's theory of relativity depicts big, heavy things. Although not completely incompatible, the two hypotheses are not yet reconciled. This story is interesting because the best physicist of the 20th century set out to disprove quantum physics, or at least render it insufficient, but he instead accomplished the exact reverse. At some point, the EPR paper allowed physicists to observe what is now known as entanglement, in which widely separated systems can behave strangely like a single quantum entity. Most crucially, entanglement is at the forefront of contemporary quantum physics, with significant implications for the creation of quantum computers. Quantum physics is a hard nut to crack. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.